Now on Toledo News this morning, the road to November, Tuesday's big wins and losses, plus ending gun violence, the events happening this weekend to promote change, and one more week, how you can kick off Jeep Fest the Jeep way. It's Saturday, August 6th, 2022. Saturday morning. My name is Jaden Jefferson and welcome to Toledo News This Morning. This is Toledo's fastest morning newscast and we get you started with a check of your first forecast. For today's forecast, expect a high in the low 90s and a low around the low 70s. Mommy Western Road between Briarfield Boulevard and Toledo Express Airport will be closed in increments for daytime pavement repairs beginning Monday, August 15th through Friday, August 19th from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday marks part two of Ohio's primary election, and there are plenty of races to watch which weren't on the ballot when voters went to the polls in May. Let's start out with the closely watched 43rd House District race, which featured two Democrats and an unopposed Republican candidate. Toledo City Councilwoman Michelle Grimm and Daniel Ortiz are both progressive Democrats, but only one will face Republican Wendy Hendricks on November 8th. And that someone will be Grimm, who according to unofficial results, won with 72% of the vote. Ortiz later congratulated Grimm on Twitter, writing, I got off the phone with Michelle Grimm to congratulate her, and we talked about what's next. She's going to have her hands full running while trying to protect abortion access from city council, and she's going to need our support. I'll share how we can help as opportunities arise. Moving on to the House District 41 race, which featured the same exact setup. Sylvania social worker Nancy Larson, a Democrat, is celebrating victory over her opponent of the same party, Colin Flanagan. Flanagan is a University of Toledo law student from Oregon. Larson now moves on to face attorney Joshua Williams. After the election was called, Flanagan tweeted out the following. I've just called Nancy Larson to congratulate her on her win tonight over me. It was a long, tumultuous journey, but I'm proud of the race I ran. Thank you to all those who have supported me with your money, your time, your voices, and your vote. I do not know what the future holds, but tomorrow I'll put on my shoes and go to work just like I did today. We've got elections in November to win. And finally, the 42nd House District race. It features Democrat Erica White and her opponent of the same party, who previously withdrew from the race. She now moves on to face Republican Derek Marin. So you're probably wondering, Jaden, what's my district? Well, here's that map, which is illegal, by the way, but was still used for this primary because it was already programmed into election systems across the state. New maps are coming next year. But as we count down to November 8th, be sure to join me on Community Focus every Sunday at 11 a.m. as I chat with the candidates. As expected, turnout was low, lower than May's primary, in fact. Only 7% of eligible Lucas County residents exercised their right, down from about 15% in May. Ahead of the November general election, which includes the high-profile race to fill Senator Rob Portman's seat, Republican candidate J.D. Vance has released his first ad. This is after months of heavy advertising by his Democratic opponent, Congressman Tim Ryan of Youngstown. Happening today, volunteers will be gathering in East Toledo to help revitalize one of the many neighborhoods in our community. Maumee Valley Habitat for Humanity's Rock the Block is an annual event where volunteers complete beautification projects and light home exterior repairs, such as painting, washing windows and siding, landscaping, and trash pickup. The group, which should consist of around 60 to 80 people, will check in at 8.30 a.m. in Navarre Park. A short program will follow at 9 a.m. Then, from 12.30 p.m. to 3 p.m., a community celebration will be held. Available will be community resources, free food, and even entertainment. All are welcome to attend. Also happening today, the Brianna Banner Ladybug Society is hosting a motorcycle ride to end gun violence. It begins at 11.30 a.m. in Sleepy Hollow Park and ends at the Frederick Douglass Center, where speakers, vendors, and live entertainment will be present. Continuing coverage now of the community's efforts to reduce gun violence. Happening this Sunday in front of one government center at 5 p.m., the ministry acts to fellowship will be hosting a prayer service. All are invited to attend. This public servant, you had the ultimate sacrifice. Can you believe that it has been two years since Toledo police officer Anthony Dia was killed in the line of duty at the Alexis Road Home Depot? Since then, his life has been honored with donation drives for causes that were close to his heart and events to bring light out of a dark time. But Tuesday, to serve as a reminder of Officer Dia's values and sacrifice, a stretch of Alexis Road in front of that Home Depot was renamed in his honor. Officer Anthony Dia Memorial Highway became a reality following the passage of House Bill 291, which was eventually signed into law by Governor Mike DeWine. The bill also includes a Memorial Highway designation for Officer Brandon Stalker, who was killed in the line of duty back on January 18th of 2021. 
Down the winding roads of Southeast Michigan is Adrian. It's the seat of Lenawee County, and it's also where impassioned community members gathered Monday at the county courthouse to rally against the lack of movement in the case of Dee Warner's disappearance. Among the frustrated community members, Lenawee County Sheriff Troy Bevere. Facing criticism, he came with news that has been long awaited. Last week on the 26th, I made an official request to Michigan State Police to become the lead agency. Yeah! When pressed about the many concerns from residents of his community, Sheriff Bevere didn't want to go into detail, just adding that the case now lies in the hands of MSP. Toledo Jeep Fest is just one week away, so to get everyone excited, there's a party happening this upcoming Friday to celebrate. From noon to 6 p.m. at the Monroe Superstore, there will be 18 off-road obstacles, as well as live music, unique giveaways, and more. And new this year, for the big parade on Saturday, a virtual option for those looking to save a little money. If you want to do the parade virtually, you can sign up and get the exclusive parade t-shirt um, and be part of the camaraderie even from your home state of somewhere maybe far away. For the full festival lineup, visit ToledoJeepFest.com. I'll be there for Saturday's parade with updates and a full recap. After a successful event last year, Toledo native Zaya Cook will be hosting her second annual basketball camp today. From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Lords University, campers will have the opportunity to improve on their current skills and meet some special guests. Doors open at 9 a.m. with attendees having the opportunity to get a picture with Zaya, autographed t-shirt, and even a souvenir. Lunch will also be served. To sign up, visit this story at jadenreports.medium.com. The cost is $100 per camper. And that's Saturday's news. Have a wonderful weekend.